I don't know. I, I haven't had great luck with Etsy. Um, I don't know. Etsy. I, I haven't figured Etsy out. <laughs> you and me both. I think with the new algorithms and all the new shit they're doing. I, I mean, I, I, the only way I sell stuff is if I actually promote it and do a, like a flash sale or something like that. Then people go buy stuff. Otherwise, it's, hard. it's such it's so such a full sea of fish swimming out there. Yeah, you can kind of get lost, like a you know, so easily, and it's one of those things that feels like you have to be kind of on it every day. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> I'm kind of bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I gotta hire somebody to do that for me. To hire my daughter or something, you know? Oh, Jesus. It's like my wife's on right. Pinterest all the time. I'm like, honey, can you do my Pinterest account for me? I don't know how to work this shit. She has like 100,000 <laughs> followers or some shit. You know, she'd kill it for me. <laughs> I got time for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we all need like a 12-year-old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hell, my 8-year-old is probably just as good as I am right now. You know? <laughs> so funny. It's so true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Wise Guy Radio Show, a podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. We will be dissecting their journeys in hopes to deliver actionable content that you, the artist, can start implementing now, helping you grow not only as a creative spirit, but also a successful artistic entrepreneur. With a little organization, relationship building, and your artistic ability, you can obtain greatness. Climb aboard. Whether an artist, retail owner, or enthusiast, we have a ton of fun in store for you. Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show. This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by American Helix. The American Helix is a revolutionary new concept in smoking technology. Based on Brunoli's principle, the shape of the pipe creates a venturi effect, causing a swirling motion of the smoke through precision micro holes that are produced for the intake system. This results in a slower burn that conserves tobacco and gives a smooth, refreshing smoke, making the Helix the smoothest hitting pipe on the market. For further info or to locate their products, you can find them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash SS Helix or contact them signature helix at gmail.com that's signature helix at gmail.com this episode is also brought to you by mountain glass arts for the month of may mountain glass is offering their borosilicate sale shot rod and tube at 40 percent off just use the word shot at checkout that's s-c-h-o-t-t and for all you soft glass nerds are having our coe 104 sale a fetre rod at 30 percent off just put in the code a fetre at checkout, and that's E-F-F-E-T-R-E -E -E at checkout, and that's also at mountainglass.com. Just go to mountainglass.com. Hey, what's happening? Welcome to the Wise Guy Radio Show, episode number 108. This is Jay Michael, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in today. With 17 years of experience behind the torch, I am as excited as always to bring you conversations with artists, sharing their stories in hopes to inspire and entertain while helping you grow your business. And today is no exception. Today's guest we have on is Nadja Gustafsson. Uh, she is a metalsmith and glass artist who currently resides in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, she uh, has lived in Australia for a couple of years. Uh, she's a graduate uh, with arts degrees in metal and jewelry from the School of American Crafts, University of Illinois. And uh, is now uh, a more or less a mixed media full time artist, and has also recently come up with a product that I had mentioned in a previous episode uh, called Great Bras of Fire, which basically is a Kevlar pad, a boob protecting pad for the ladies, and also is uh, coming up with some products for unisex type stuff for uh, men and women both. Uh, also coming up with some different, uh, just basically kind of ways of making this product work and be comfortable. Uh, so we get a conversation about the, her products and her glass history and her art history and her travels. And then also some concerns uh, that we have in terms of exposure to uh, the heat of the torch and the radiation and, and being protected and covering our asses and stuff. Kind of go all over the place with that. So hope you guys enjoy this conversation. She is uh, very interesting and super fun. Had a lot of good laughs. And uh, yeah, so there you guys go. You guys can find her at NajaGustafson.com. It's N-A-D-J-A Gustafson, G-U-S-T-A-F-S-O-N.com. 
and I'll have her link in the show notes for you to go to, as well as you can find these great bras of fire product at mountainglass.com, as we all love mountain glass. So just go there. Uh, just go to mountainglass.com, look on the search engine they have. Uh, look at the great bras of fire. Should be good to go. Uh, also wanted to remind you all, before I forget, one more time, that the flow is uh, continuing to accept their entries for their upcoming collaboration uh, issue coming out in September. That uh, the deadline is June first, but they have grace, uh, great. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, graciously extended their uh, their deadline of June first if needed, and all the information and all that good stuff is in the show notes. Basically, you just need to make sure you have some photos of some sketches or just send a fax type copy thing of sketches you guys have done. Uh, it doesn't matter what type of uh, collaboration it is in terms of art. Could be metal and glass. Could be whatever. Uh, different artists working on one piece. Uh, I have everything again in the show notes. Just check that stuff out. And also everything that you guys will have for these podcasts from here on out will be at wiseguymedia.com. You can just go to the podcast archives link and drop down and it'll have the numbers on there. Or you can just go to the main uh, page that's actually for the podcast. And you can just go into the search and look up whatever you're looking for keywords. Which That's not there yet, but it will be eventually. But for now, just go in the drop down and you'll see the numbers. So it'll all be there. And then uh, each show's page will have the full show notes pages, there's links and everything else going on along with our sponsors and what have you. So anything you might have missed, you can go back and find it there or you can just go back and listen to the show. And also, don't forget to uh, go on to iTunes if you are a listener on your iPhone and subscribe to the podcast. That way you don't miss any episodes. And also, please, if you can, go to uh, leave me a review and also a, a star re- rating of some sort would be fantastic, preferably a five-star. And the more you guys do make comments and share the show, uh, the more people hear it and the more uh, exposure iTunes gives it as well with their real weird algorithms and ranking systems. And then if you're on a Droid system, which is cool, just go to Stitcher. You can download the app there. There's also several uh, other different podcast players and apps out there you can check out. So definitely get on board there. And other than that, I am rambling on and on and on. So I'm going to get the hell out of here. Nothing major announcement-wise, but we are going to be starting our uh, new se- series coming up on selling and pricing your work. Uh, it's going to be starting here on Friday, coming out. So uh, this is now Monday, almost end of May, which is crazy. So thank you all for the awesome support in May, all the downloads and the thank yous and the comments and everything else, and the shares, all the guests that came on the show and have you. And uh, other than that, talk for me to bounce out of here. I'm going to go get in the studio and get busy, wrap up some orders, and start some new ones. So. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. We will be in touch on the next episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. Enjoy my conversation with Nadja. Y'all take care. Love you. See you. Peace. Hey, Nadja, how you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show. It's uh, a pleasure to have you on to kind of give everybody a little background on this. Uh, a couple months back on one of my episodes, I don't remember exactly what number it was, but I announced that you were now selling these through Mountain Glass, your uh, bras of fire, I should say, to be more specific, <laughs> as I'm talking while I'm thinking. Um, right. <laughs> but I did my little intro and I talked about it and I turned into a little five-year-old boy and started t- saying every little name for boobs. And I listened back to it and was like, asked my wife to listen to it to see if it was like offensive and stuff, but we were laughing. So she's like, no, that's not offensive. But then it made oh, me want to, okay. yeah, totally. But then it made me want to reach out to you. Cause I think what your, what your thought with this product is incredible. And I don't know if a lot of people have thought about it, um, the terms of protection uh, for women, for chest and also for men as well, which I want to get into. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so that's kind of what, how we, you and I got in contact was through your uh, Great Bras of Fire product, which we will get into later on. But before yeah. we do, get too far down a wormhole, if you want to give us kind of your humble beginnings and where you got started and what got the bug lit and all other fun stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I uh, was raised in Philadelphia and had a coppersmith grandfather who let us grandkids sort of mess around in his metal studio and I just really caught the metal art making bug um, and went on to pursue you know a couple degrees in you know jewelry metal smithing Um, and I just really liked working both small and branched out into working larger larger you know sculptural work Um, and uh, eventually ended up doing musical instrument repair 
with my first husband, and then uh, then I met James Yawn and ended up moving to Asheville, and he was trying to get ready for a bead and button in Tucson and needed needed as much glass as possible, so he kind of sat me down at the torch and taught me how to make beads, and that kind of branched into making other glass products. Um and I really just really enjoyed working in, in glass. And then we started also doing metal combined with his glass. So I would fabricate metal around some glass pieces that he would make. So it's got to kind of do a little bit of both metal and glass, which I, I really like doing. Um, so that's kind of the quickie version. Yeah. Of- how I got here. <laughs> so how old are you when your uh when your grandfather was introducing you to the metalwork? Oh, there's a picture of me at the age of three with a hammer in my hand <laughs> and him standing next to me. That's so awesome. I think I've been doing it for so long I couldn't tell you when it started. <laughs> <How is that? laughs> was it like traditional forgery type stuff? Um, he he mostly had us making jewelry and sort of small sculptural objects. This is more small scale. I actually don't know how to weld, um, but uh, I just sort of applied a jewelry technique called chasing and repousse to larger, larger work. So it's kind of a jewelry making technique, sort of. I mean, the Statue of Liberty is chasing and repousse. She's all hammered. She, yeah. Uh, so you oh, know it applies to large and small. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, I guess like you're saying, it's, as long as you can do it small, you can do it big. It's like when you practice glass stuff. Like I don't know for myself personally, I always go really big at first, and then I shrink it down to the actual size I want to make whatever I'm making. Just a little, but the big piece is like my sketch and to learn the the process. I guess in a sense, it's kind of backwards from what most people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's weird. I don't know why I do it. But uh, yeah. but that's interesting. So when when you got into the the music stuff, like the flutes and repair work, were you doing like full fabrication of like fixing holes and like doing keys and stuff like that for them? Um, sometimes when it called for it, or if they wanted a special brace, um, did a little bit of decorative stuff. Um, I did a decorative uh, counterweight for a trombone for this guy named Jeff Bradshaw who plays with Joel Scott and he has his own solo stuff. So every now and then I'll see, you know, my, I'll call it my trombone, you know, on social media. I'm like, that's my trombone. (laughs) Um, So, um, but yeah, I did a lot of just um, sort of custom, more custom pieces for, you know, specific parts of instruments, a lot of braces or, you know, if there was a patch that needed, um, you can do that kind of thing, but it did a lot of just pad work, um, repairs on clarinets and flutes. Hmm. Yeah, they're kind of complicated instruments. I've always been intrigued by them. I never played them before, really, because I mean, I've blown through them, but I've made noise. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> to be more specific, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. So yeah, what, so, but there's a, there's a lot of metal working involved, and you know. Yeah, so many, yeah, a lot of detail intricacies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. fascinating. Yeah. So then you then transition to that into your glass. So did you? So in terms of like the metals or the the glass you started doing your jewelry, did you really find it an easy transition for yourself? No, glass is hard. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of tears. <laughs> I love it. That's why I love it here. Hear that, people? Shit ain't easy. <laughs> it's not and um my gosh my shoulders hurt like crazy when i first started and i was like i can't hold my arms up anymore yeah that's funny so that's one of the things i tell people when they first start it's like tomorrow you'll be sore and you'll have muscles that hurt that you've never hit, even knew you had yes you know it's amazing yeah and i mean i would do hammering for hours you know i was hammering these large pieces of metal and flipping them over i mean i'm not you know I'm not a fragile bird or anything, but yeah, holding your arms up like that and and just having that control and you know that balance point with your with your body is a whole nother way of working. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it's so 
I mean, it's like candy. I mean, you you, you, you can't stop even, you know, when it gets hard sometimes. Just yeah. it's, it's just such an amazing medium. Yeah, it's funny you say that with the candy things. Like when I first started getting into doing a lot of uh, cane work and stuff early on, probably about three to five years in, there was a guy, I don't remember what his jock something on the Food Network that did, had like a sugar show. And he did mm-hmm. them like hand blown sugar, like swans and different birds and stuff, so that he was making, you know, actually like doing blown glass with their sugar. But he was also making flat, ca- like rainbow canes and different ribbon canes out of sugar. And it was the exact same t- pull technique that I eventually transitioned and translated to my glass just from seeing this guy pulling sugar, you know, pulling color cane from for whatever. And they would twist them up and make candy canes and all kind of shit for cakes. And it was pretty neat seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. It is very similar. Yeah. A similar way of having to move things and mix things and stretch it and just get that temperature just right. And Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> so how long have you been on the torch now for doing the glass? Uh, let's see. Only five years. Okay. Um, I'm still a newbie. Yeah, so you're just not figuring uh, it out. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm still that toddler, like putting one foot in, you know so then yeah. when they're learning to walk you know <laughs> yeah totally and i agree but that's, i'm glad you're saying that because it's so true like that like i find some people catch on pretty quickly but still it takes like five years to really like find your voice in a sense you know and what you're trying to do mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think that's very true so being to be in, able to express yourself artistically in class, you, you really have to have the craft under you first i think yeah exactly yeah i know your medium for sure Mm-hmm. Do you mm-hmm. find like a like a a battle of creativity in between your metal and your glass? Like, does one pull you away from the other at times? Um, no, I don't think so. I think they kind of feed each other. Um, yeah, because they kind of inspire. Like, if I can do this in glass, and then I could add this glass to this metal, and I can work this metal around the glass this way, and. Yeah, I think they sort of feed each other. I, I feel like metal is very, this is going to sound kind of corny, but metal sort of grounding. Like you have to sit down and sand and polish and cut and like, um, you know, with glass, it's like, oh, I need to polish that. And you just, you kind of lick it with the flame and it's polished. Um, and so metal, it's just such a different way of working. Um, but I feel like they feed each other. Yeah, I could, <coughs> pretty well. <laughs> Excuse me, I can see that it's almost like a bee and a flower kind of thing, the kind of like symbiotic relationship they have with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And glass, the glass and metal go together very nicely as a com- combined medium. Yeah, yeah. I sort like, of think of glass as like the gemstones that you would set in metal. Just to, you have to get a little more creative in the way that you set it if right. you're going to fabricate versus electroforming, um, which I don't do. Mm-hmm. Right on. So it's a different way of working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so when you were first doing your beads, when you guys did the, the bead show, was were you doing like mandrel style beads or were you doing like just with pendants and stuff? Yeah, just on just on a mandrel, just making one after the other, trying to get get them to be round. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Using like using soft glass mer- Moretti or whatever it's called. So. No, we were doing Boro. Okay. Um, yeah, he was having me do Boro beads, and and that's where I got hooked. You know, you you start to you know get that round, and it does it, and it's like magic. Like, oh my gosh, it did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of torch were you using at the time? Uh, I think he had me on a cheetah. Okay. And then I graduated to a phantom and then landed with a mirage. Nice. Which is what I have now. Heck yeah. And I really like. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice torch. And I remember when I first started working on the phantom and they gave me a foot pedal and that big flame seemed so huge and scary that I, I was a little afraid <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous <laughs> at first, <laughs> which is kind of silly. I'm used to using a torch, you know. I would anneal big, you know, slabs of metal with a pretty big torch. So it's kind of 
silly, but. <laughs> oh, I totally understand though. And then it's like all of a sudden it's not big enough, and then you go to the next step level up, and then it's like, huh, now I need to get a delta, yeah. and then all of a sudden that's too big, and then you want to shrink <laughs> down to the next size. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, so funny. We're yeah. all so spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Compared yeah, now it's like, what was I so afraid of? It's silly. This thing is awesome. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I love that. Though. Like, when I had to have newbies come in, and, and, like, the first couple of days, like, day one, it's like, they don't even want to turn the torch on. They're scared to death of it. And then, like, by day three, they walk in the studio like they, like they own the place, you know? <laughs> it's fun. It's a fun, like, this confidence totally happens overnight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Neat. Yeah, I, I have had jewelry students. I've taught jewelry a bit, and... Yeah, watching them go from just yeah getting over that hurdle of lighting the torch to soldering something together, and it's pretty. I always think that's an amazing process to watch people like you know transform and understand how things work, and um, and then and then you never look at glass or metal pieces in the world the same ever again. Mm-hmm. Because you kind of pull them apart and put them back together, um, I think that's pretty incredible to watch yeah, a student yeah. or a new new person do. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's the beauty with you know get to a point where you can actually bring people in to teach if you're if you can teach. Not everybody is able to teach, but to be able to have that at that opportunity to see it's it's neat. You know, especially when you can you can talk to somebody that's doing it with you that's new but they're still doing it and they can actually understand what the hell you're talking about instead of like deer in headlights just staring at you with their head turned sideways like what the hell yeah, right. you know like, what the fuck's a punny yeah. you know <laughs> right. you want me to what yeah. what <laughs> go home and memorize these terms come back tomorrow yeah. right. <laughs> and it is, it is like that when you very first learn to drive a car or something and mm-hmm. not only do you have to operate that slightly dangerous machine but you also have to be out in traffic in the world and so there's so many different things to think about at that moment you know so it's it's always kind of interesting to watch people kind of you know their reflexes start to kick in and they understand and you get more of a flow to what you're doing yeah it's pretty sweet and seeing everybody start kind of yeah. getting this choreographed dance going along with everything Yes. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's super yeah. neat. So are you guys still doing the, the uh, beat shows? We have not been doing uh, any big trade shows lately. Um, James has been doing a fair bit of teaching, um, uh, more so than trade shows. Um, we use uh, several distributors here in Asheville. Um and that's been working pretty well for us. I think the last show we did was the the Champ show in Denver um, when it was the first one where it was legal in Denver. Okay. I think that was the last trade show that we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those weird dichotomies, like if, whether you do the trade shows or you get a distributor that does trade shows. It's like, uh, you know, some people want to go to the trade shows for this just for, for the environment, but also obviously to sell your shit, but... I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard for myself personally having a family and stuff and getting away for a weekend and much less, tr- you know, I don't mind spending the money on it if I know I'm going to make it in return, but you just never know. So it's like, you know, yes. it's those risks that you have to take no matter how established that you are, you know, so it's like, oh, just take my shit and go sell it for me, please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we have a couple kids and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is hard traveling to shows like that. It can be. Yeah, it's hard to leave your family and your regular schedule, and um, sometimes, but sometimes it's kind of fun to be able to participate in something like that and see everybody's work and get to actually talk to the people and interact. And yeah, that's, that's always a, a plus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's part of my main drive to get to these shows is to just be immersed in all of that all the excitement and mm-hmm. all the artists and all the glass and everything else and just get to shake hands and kiss babies and see badass glass. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Do you guys sell to uh, joint forces? Yes. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They've been great. 
Yeah, they're one of one of my two. I was gonna try. I'm trying to get Nady on. I haven't. I actually gotta get a hold of him to do that. But I've. Uh, I talked to Phil about it. And he's like, yeah, let's get a hold of Nady. Bring him on. Talk about the company and their glass history and stuff. It'd be fun to bring them on. They're definitely good guys and good company and supporting the, yeah. the glass artists for a long time too, which is cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nady is awesome. I'm so glad he moved to Asheville. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard from a lot of people. <laughs> they all say the same thing. It's cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Asheville's great for glass. I mean, there's so many artists here. And Hell yeah. So, yeah. So many people to bounce off of. When I first started doing this, like 99, I guess 2000, I went up there in, I think it was in 2000, 2001. I was up in northern Georgia, but I had, I had a friend of mine that we drove up to Asheville a couple of times, and it was like right when that whole area was getting purchased by like like all the artists and all the hippies were moving in town and buying all the old crack houses and all the prostitutes were moved out and all the new small businesses were moving in and it was like it's totally changing. It was amazing seeing this awesome environment, you know, people on the streets playing mm. their drums and hanging out and just bullshitting and creating art and just hanging out, reading books and playing music. It was just, I was like, damn, I got to move here. This place is awesome. <laughs> and it's gorgeous, you know, on top of it. Yes, it is. It is a really beautiful, it is a really beautiful place. I'm very lucky to live here. Yeah, it's definitely home. Yeah, you guys up in the mountains area? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's beautiful. Hell yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, if anybody's <laughs> never, or if you haven't been there before, I definitely recommend it. It's like the Blue Ridge Mountains are around the corner, and you got Northern Georgia, and then you got the. Car- I mean, it's just you got so much to see there besides all the cool places to shop and hang out and eat and drink. And yes, yeah, you can just enjoy the woods so easily in the mountains here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to mention the food and the beer and the, and all the less artists that are yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a cool little new mecca of glass, that's for damn sure. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and it's nice. I mean, you can, we go to our distributor and there's, you know, you know, some, several glass artists that you admire. You get to chat and see what they're working on and bounce off ideas. And it's, it's a really great, you know, community for that. Yeah, it's super cool. So in the uh, functional yeah. glass world, what kind of stuff do you guys make? Uh, just, I'm, well, I mostly make a lot of spoons, um, and James does the range, you know, um, mostly he's known for his marbles. He, um, he's done really large, beautiful marbles, but he's, um, you know, he started, he started out as more of a painter. And so I always think of his marbles as him painting in glass, you know, he's, he's, very good painter I think and so I always view his marbles as if they're like his paintings but in glass oh huh, mm-hmm. interesting did you put any of those pictures of those images within my email of his stuff I think I sent you uh, one of the big ones where we did in, that they did in Corning at the glass fest there okay um, cool but I can send you more too Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing maybe some of like, some of his paintings too, because uh, I haven't opened the file. Like I opened up your bio, but the my email files were. I've, you GoDaddy's changing everything to freaking Outlook Express right now, which is a pain in the ass. I'm having to transfer all my oh. shit out over to Outlook off off my GoDaddy email. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh girl. So, yeah. Yeah. It's one more, one more thing. Like you know, we've we've communicated yeah. like everything but smoke signals over the past week. I think. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, it's so funny. I'm like, where, where were we messaging from? <laughs> oh, I swear, I say this all the time. Someone's got to invent some platform that has like every fucking way we can communicate on one page, get alert, something comes up. I don't know. It just would make life so much easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the more technology we have the wor- for communication, the worse we get at communicating too. I, yeah, I agree. I've kind of encountered that a bit. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Especially the kids that don't want to make a phone call. That's all they want to do is just text, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm guilty of that. But yeah. well, I am. I am too. Don't get me wrong. It sometimes it's a lot easier. But like for instance, like my daughter last night, she they had these awards, and uh, Maylie, come on, Ooh. come on. 
She's talking. But uh, she was up for uh, assistant director. She's a, a high school a theater school, whatever it's called, PCCA, Pinellas County Center for the Arts. And she uh, oh, cool. did it was assistant director in this last show they just had. And she was up against four other people, I guess, for assistant director. And she won the award, which is awesome. But she, she oh, sent me a, a text message to let me know she was home. And I had, she's like, I have news. I'm like, call me. No text. <laughs> so, so she yeah, called. Yeah. Yeah. Important stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. You want to hear it in, in the voice. But yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> It's too funny. Oh, that's awesome. Hell yeah. So at, uh, mm-hmm. at what point in time then, I guess, to kind of transition into your uh, Great Bras of Fire product, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I, I kind of would definitely get into this. So what, what, at what point in time did you feel personally the need for this protection, I guess? Yeah, I was helping James. He had gotten a hold of this ginormous cobalt tubing. Um, I want to say it was like... I'm going to say it was like four inches diameter, Whoa. big. And, and he wanted to make this giant thing with it. And I can't remember what he was going to do with it, but I think he was going to try to just make a ginormous spoon with it as kind of as a, as an attention getter, you know, mm-hmm. for the, um, for the, for our cable or we selling. And so I helped him, I was helping him cut it in half on the torch and I and I kind of realized like whoa like that's that's hot and I you know I, I had on heat protection I had Kevlar gloves and um, woo it was really really hot and it really really hurt <laughs> so I was like I need some you know be nice to have some way of just and I can't I can't stand aprons they make me crazy uh-huh. like I can't stand having that thing around my neck and um, so it's like, it'd be nice to just have something to stick, you know, you already wear, well, I wear a bra, so just be nice to stick something in there and in with the Kevlar glove and it's like, oh gosh, that's so itchy. And it's like, I just want to come up with a little pad that you can just, you can wash, that will just sit in there and it's light. It's the summertime. You're not wearing all these layers. And, um, and so it's just kind of born from that. You know, heck yeah. So, do you have so, do you have various like models of this thing of the product? Say that again. I'm sorry. Or do you have like various models of it, like the just the pads, and then you have it because I can. I know we were talking about how not every not every female blowing glass wears a bra, so they have to have some way of holding it up. Yes. Yeah. I'm actually working. I have a local sem- seamstress that I'm working with, and we're coming up with a prototype for something for both men and women. Um, so that you, if you don't wear a bra, you don't you don't have to worry about um, sticking a pad into something that's going to fall, or you won't be able to keep it in there. Because um, obviously, you can't like safety pin something that's going to get hot. Right. It'll hurt. Yeah. And it'll be even hotter. So um, yeah, we're kind of working on a new um, a new product so that also if you have if you're getting you know sort of burned at, around your stomach area because some people have asked me like if you have a big kind of have a big tummy and you're close to your torch you know there's like this sort of triangle that gets tends to get a little too hot so we're kind of working on um something that will be a little more adjustable so that you can put the pad where you want it and maybe wear it under your under your clothes but it's still kind of not a whole like not a whole welding jacket or anything heavy like that it would just be um kind of just a cover that you can wear over your shoulders that you could then wear under a t-shirt or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, so that's yeah we're working on that she's going to be sewing up the prototype this weekend actually nice. um so um yeah that's that's kind of where i'm headed and i uh uh, also, we're also kind of thinking about trying to come up with a kind of a sleeve that could then attach to that, um, that would protect sort of that. There's that funny little area between your, you know, your shoulder and where your Kevlar sleeve ends. We've had people tell me it gets burned yeah. pretty frequently, and so we're thinking about doing some kind of thing that would attach to that 
the strap. Nice. Those, you know, the undergarment. I, I haven't come up with a name for that yet, but it's, you know, the gears are going. Yeah, so, I'm, yeah um, I can hear them. <laughs> <laughs> well, my gears are going. You know, because, uh, you know, part of my concern, which is why I wanted to talk about this, was like, you know, we have so much exposure to, besides the heat, but to the chemicals in the glass, but also to the UV rays and stuff coming off there. And I know back when I was first getting started, uh, with one of my studios I had, we had access, this guy had a whole shit ton of standard wall tubing that they were selling for like pennies on the dollar. So we bought like, I think it was like 40 cases we ended up getting. It was like 20 cases of like 52 standard wall. And mm-hmm. all the other half of it was 38. But we were taking like the 50 and making inside outs with it. But I was taking like a four to five inch section of this shit and then doing double flares and laying all this color. It was like all this heat. <clears throat> and I have a bad habit of not wearing a shirt or if I do have, you know, my shirt off, I have a fan blowing on me to cool me off. But like, I feel like I was cooking my heart at times, you know, like, and I've, and I've, I've, you know, and I've dealt with high blood pressure issues for the past seven, eight years. And I was trying to think like, I hope I didn't fuck myself up and maybe have all the, you know, repercussions that I'm dealing with, with my blood pressure issues based on then when I was like cooking myself, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then I think about like the radiation exposure and they say like for women getting mammograms now, they're trying to like minimize it because of the exposure to the radiation, but then you're getting exposure from your torch on a daily basis. So, right, you know, right. so, and then that, that's all again, that's why I want to bring you on. Cause like, I think that they're now that this industry is growing as big as it is and how many people are getting involved, we should have guinea pigs for us in a sense set up to where we can do some scientific research to really find truly what this is doing to women because I would hate to see women get breast cancer from this thing or some stupid shit because we're not we're not paying attention to it you know everybody wants to get into this right, to this right. industry because it's fun and it's cool it's romantic in a sense and you know it's dangerous at times but like the truth idea is that we are exposing ourselves to all kind of shit that we don't even realize it I mean look at the cadmium thing going on right now you know it's like mm-hmm. you know you know we all have to think about this stuff so I, I'm, I'm just curious if you've seen research on this or haven't done any studying yourself uh, honestly, no, I haven't, and um, I would be very curious about that as well. Um, um, I mean, that's a really, really good question, and, and I think that's something that artists always kind of have to make themselves aware of: is you know what what is your medium is your medium safe that you're working in? I mean, I'm sure that many painters that are brilliant were poisoning themselves with lead yeah. um, from their paints. Um, and, you know, we, we, as artists, I think we want to have our hands on the material. We don't want that barrier or that separation from our, from our medium, but we also, you also don't want your medium to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I totally came at this from a, this is really uncomfortable and hurts and it can't be good for me. Um, I would like something light and easy to stick down there yeah. um, that I can wash, you know, but yeah, that's a very good question. Um, well, I think it's great because so what, what you're, is, you're, 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 you're finding a solution in a sense in this white space that's out there, you know, as a, as a band aid almost, you know, but I think which the mm-hmm. road, the path that you're on, like you're talking about, you know, trying to protect that little, our little shoulder boob boob area that we have, you know, that by our armpits that that's always exposed. You know, like I know, I totally know what you're talking about. Like I've had full coverage except for that one little area, and it's like it hurts. It's like so sensitive when you get burned that you know from that stuff. But uh, you right, know, I wonder if right. you could like hook up with like a local college that do, that's that could do some kind of study along with you in the products is really see and like fine tune it to a point to where like you know exactly what kind of protection it's getting, the benefits of it. You know, or something, something of that. I mean, I know there's so much fucking money out there for grants and for private industry. I'm sure there could something could be done, especially with with breast cancer as as prevalent as it is, unfortunately. You know. Yeah, that's a really yeah, that's a really good suggestion, um, and that's definitely something I can pursue for sure. I want five percent. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I but mean, seriously, if like, you think uh, about yeah. it. Yeah, if you think about it, like it's not good to get sunburned over and over and over. And I mean, to a certain extent, that's essentially what you're doing to yourself. Um, and yeah, that's, yeah, that's something to definitely think about. Um, yeah. Cause even like all the t-shirts you can buy now that have the UV protection in them and stuff, you know, like, 
start the process of wearing a, t- a shirt made of that stuff, you know, it just leads to protect your body. But like I had uh, with having Adrian Light on talking about her, her issues with her lupus symptoms that she was having dealing with the UV light and stuff from the torch and, you know, everything else mm-hmm. going on on top of stress. But a lot of it was from the torch and from sunlight and stuff because she's very sensitive to it. So again, mm-hmm. there's obvious exposure mm-hmm. that we're getting. I mean, I had no idea that fluorescent lighting in our homes gives us UV light rays, you know, like I had no idea until I had had her on and brought another guest on talking about the products and stuff like so again that's why i wanted to bring you on because i think your idea and thought came from a necessity which is how things usually start like the fucking pillow pet came from these parents that wanted something cute for their kid now it's like a hundred trillion dollar industry right you know so i think you're on something amazing here and uh yeah so after we get off the air, I want to talk to you about it too because I got some legal ideas <laughs> for you <laughs> for protection. That's, oh, that's great! <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, I would definitely. Um, I'm actually enrolled full time in school at the moment uh, for health and fitness science. Oh, awesome! And I'm actually in uh, anatomy physiology number two. Cool. Um, where we're, you know we're really getting into systems and how they work, and you know that would be a really good question just to put to my prof- my my professors yeah. um, um, just to start with and see what they have to say about yeah. it. Um, I agree, and I think too. Do do I mean kind of a it's completely ADD moment here, but I myself mm-hmm. personally, I'm I have a medical background, so like I have besides the art, I have the medical side. Anatomy and physiology too was my favorite of, of the two. Like all the lab stuff, oh. like I just I love that shit. But uh, <laughs> but it but it teaches you about the human body and it teaches you about proportions and functions and the way like you're saying systems. You find out how systems actually work, which for me it translated mm-hmm. into my glass. Like I was able to figure out systems and how the glass works and how and, mm-hmm. and you know thinking about proportions and the way the human body works and moves and just translated that mm-hmm. into my glass. But also then you can help yourself out too if you burn yourself even though you're not being trained medically you're still learning how the body works you know right so right i think it's all valuable ah. yeah yeah so you i mean yeah if you think about that constant exposure to heat and how your body handles that you know and just tries to keep you in homeostasis. So yeah, what are you? Yeah, what is your body having to do to adjust to that constantly? Um, is a you know it's a really interesting question. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, my newsletter I'm actually putting out for the second, I guess, quarter or two for the podcast is all about summertime coming in the heat. And I have I found a huge article that the CDC put out on. Uh, heat prevention and symptoms and signs and all of, you know everything from heat stroke to yeah you know, I mean all that stuff so it's I it's mm-hmm. going to be part of my news article and then also uh, the benefits of drinking uh, water with lemon and salt but we're drinking warm water not cold water as a homeostasis type of thing for balancing your mm-hmm. way your blood is and everything else but uh, right you know right. so so it's it's definitely right. this time of year stuff we got to think about especially besides the fire we're de- again we're dealing with hot studios. You know everything mm-hmm. else, so it's definitely people have got to yeah. be aware. Besides the sunscreen, like I saw a thing the other day, they were talking about sunscreens that are like SPF seventy, and by the time you actually use it, when you go in the like if you're at the beach and you go in the water, it's down to like a thirty. I think they were saying like the the percentages that your body actually absorbs to what it actually comes off your skin that doesn't work. It's like, oh, wow. it was amazing how much of it you lose. Not to mention some of that shit's terrible for you. Yeah, I always wonder about that because I keep hearing like wear your sunscreen, wear your sunscreen, but at the same time I keep hearing, well, sunscreen's not that great for you, and it's like, well, what do I do? (laughs) I guess I guess uh, don't go out in the daytime, and (laughs) I mean, yeah, that's that's a good, yeah, you kind of have to make choices to a certain extent um, at this point. Um, Yeah. That's yeah. That's a really good. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, I will definitely pursue pursue that for sure. Yeah, definitely. Because I, you know, I, I got all my brain. Like I said, my 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 cogs are turning, thinking of how you can take this product, because this could turn into like you're saying for men too. Because I know myself again, I, I would love to have some kind of protection that wasn't just an apron, especially because when I'm wearing my apron, I look like I'm blowing glass with no clothes on <laughs> completely. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. People walk in my studio like, man, you got some clothes on in there? 
It's just me and my apron, you know. <laughs> but it keeps you protected at least, you know, but still, it's yeah, cumbersome. Yeah, that, that, that would hurt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely cumbersome. I definitely would definitely excited to see where you take this. For sure. Oh, and I'm um, just real quick, just Google some sunscreen stuff. Um, I did an episode over over the summertime. I uh, went to my dermatologist, and we were talking about sunscreens and stuff. And she was saying that uh, really the stuff that there's one out of Australia actually that's uh, let me actually look this up real quick. She said it's probably one of the better ones on the market because of its uh, natural. Oh, blue. That's what it's called. Blue lizard. Blue lizard. Okay, yeah, I've had a dermatologist tell me to use that kind as well. Yeah, um, which is funny because I could never find blue lizard in Australia when I lived there for three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty stupid. <laughs> That's so I know. Right? <laughs> I was like, um... <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, no, that stuff's supposed to be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, my, my dermatologist was saying, if you can't r- pronounce the words and the ingredients, you should not put it on your skin. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good advice. And you probably shouldn't eat anything that... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when I was a kid, I used to sit in the shower and wash my hair, and then read like the ingredients in the shampoo, and then which helped right. me for anatomy down the road. But still, right. you know, try to pronounce the stuff that's in the bottles. Half an hour later, I come out of the shower. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> so yeah. So is your product like I know it's available and for sale. So uh, you want to tell us where we can where we can actually find it at? Yeah, Mountain Glass is carrying it now, um, and so they're probably uh, a good place to go for them. And uh, you can always message me on Facebook, and I can get you connected. I do have an Etsy page that says it's Great Bras of Fire, um, so that's available as well. But, um, yeah, any of those three three ways is a good way to connect with them um yeah i'll make sure i have the link for mountain glass on there on the on your show notes awesome yeah they've they're they've been great they're so awesome Um, we're very spoiled having them you know right down the road so (laughs) oh yeah i'm jealous like when i was up last year i went up there and visited them when i was in northern georgia and i was like god i could live up here and just drive down the street and get my materials this is fucking awesome yeah, you know? it's like a candy store. Oh, man, and the drive there through the Blue Ridge was amazing. Like, it was just, the whole, it was so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and now they're in a much bigger space in the River Arts District, which um, is pretty sweet. Yeah, I know Joe was excited about the whole mm-hmm. move and, and freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, my gosh, that would be such an undertaking. I can't even imagine. I said that to him. I walked in here. I was like, oh, my God, you guys are moving all of this. I have trouble thinking about moving my own studio. But, I mean, God almighty. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Gives me anxiety just thinking about it now. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But they are awesome. Yeah, they're definitely a, a huge asset to our community. It's been it's been a pleasure having them as a sponsor and bringing them on the show and just talking and sharing their, you know, their sales all the time and just putting them out there because they just their customer service, everything. It's just I can go on for days about them. They're just amazing. Yeah, yeah. They're actually going to – I was in Asheville for 24 hours visiting when I was living in Australia, and my James took me to Mountain Glass just to see what it looked like, and that kind of sealed it for me with my visit to Mountain Glass. <laughs> um, it's like, okay, I, I have to move here. I don't know anything about glass, you know, I, and I don't really know this person very well, but I have to move here. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I actually cried on the airplane ride back to Australia. I was just so like freaked out that I, it was just, I had no choice. It was one of those, it was very strange. I was like, I have to move there. And yeah, and I, I credit Mountain Glass as being the, the end, the end piece of that decision. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. So how was Australia to kind of yeah. go back to that? I mean, I know it was a, you know, a past life in a sense, but. Mm-hmm. I would love to visit Australia. It's definitely worth, yeah, 
Uh, it's a beautiful country. Um, the animals and plants are incredible. And, um, it's, 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 it is beautiful. I, I would recommend anybody go to visit there. Um, and, you know, they do have a lot of arts. You know, I, I was in Adelaide, and they have this place called the Jam Factory, which is just this old factory building that houses all different kinds of artist studios. Um, and uh, so they have a glass hot shop there, and metalworking, um, this just a beautiful facility. So, um yeah, it's it's a really great place to visit, um, and I, I definitely enjoyed living there. I mean, I, I ended up becoming a citizen, so I have dual citizenship. And um, Neat. yeah, it's, it's 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 yeah, it's a gorgeous country to visit. They have great wine. <laughs> Heck yeah, <laughs> and the beaches are amazing. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth the long airplane ride. Yeah, what's like sixteen mm-hmm. hours or some craziness? Yeah, the long flight is the long flight's usually anywhere between uh thirteen and fifteen hours, okay. depending on um where you're flying from. Um but then you have to catch sort of connector flights to get you to where you ultimately want to be. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's 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 long. You just you just you just suck it up and do it. Yeah, long ass nap. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, or get drunk one of the two, or both. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. And uh, we've been very lucky because uh, Christian Arnold and Lori Young were living in Melbourne and just moved to Asheville recently, so um, it's kind of nice to have some Australians, you know, come live in Asheville. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Did you find that you picked up the accent at all while you were living there? No. I can't even imitate the accent. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's very hard. (laughs) Like, if I go to Asheville, like, I have a little bit of a southern twang to be even living in Florida. But if I go to, like, to Tennessee, Asheville, I become a local within five minutes. It's amazing. I'm like, hey, you know, it's like I become country boy right away. It's so funny. I don't know what the hell it is, but I was born on the beach and... I can live in the country all day. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James kind of does that. If he gets around the accent, he kind of slides, slides south a little bit. Yeah, my ex-wife when we went to Tennessee, she's like, "Where the hell did that come from?" I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I got some country guy and I got some some black woman in me too, so they both come out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm from Philadelphia, and uh, I, you know, I, I don't think I sound too Philadelphian except uh, for water, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but, Jesus. But <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to do the Australian. My daughter has just the slightest touch of Australian accent, which is, is kind of. I, I can hear it. I don't think not everybody can hear it, but uh, the way she says certain words. Is, like, oh, there's my little Aussie in you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. It's got to be cute, though, to hear it, for sure. Oh, it's, yeah. It was really cute. <laughs> How are the laws over there, like the cannabis laws and stuff? I heard they're pretty kind of strict over there. They're very strict. Um, the last time I went to visit my daughter, I got to hang out with um, Veronique uh, Selfman, and she... Uh, you know, it's it's hard for glass glass artists because they really aren't supposed to make pipes. Yeah. Um, so it's that's kind of a tricky balance, and you know everything there is very expensive. So gas is expensive, oxygen's expensive, you know, um, glass is expensive. So you know it's that makes it very challenging. Um, I think for glass people in in Australia. Yeah. Well, they listen to the show, so. What's up, all you Australian crazinesses? Because uh, I definitely want to get some of the show from over there to talk about the the community over there and the industry and stuff. Because it definitely it seems like it's way underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, when I I mean, I I didn't start doing glass until I met James and moved you know moved to Asheville and met you know was introduced to glass. So I had no 
I don't know the glass world in Australia at all because I was so immersed in metal um, while I was there, you know, for yeah. three and a half years. Um, and so I'm only just discovering what glass is in Australia now that I'm not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. But, um, but it, you know, it just so happened that Veronique lived in Adelaide where I was and um, it was really nice to be able to spend time in her studio and spend time with her and, you know, talk about glass, you know, here versus glass there. But, you know, Christian and Lori can talk a lot about that as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. They, 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 were, they've lived, they lived in Melbourne for a very long time together, so. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Did, do, yeah. do you find like yeah. there any influence from like the culture over there that you find in your work at all? Um, you know, when I moved to Australia, I started this obsession with octopus. Um, and I just started hammering octopuses in, in metal like crazy. Um, and I, I, uh, so much of sea life started to influence me just because you live at the beach. Um, hmm. And so, yeah, I think that kind of imagery took over my work. And I also became obsessed with octopuses because, um, you know, they're, they're so amazing. They're found in every ocean and they're very uh, smart and they figure out spaces and they, they're not afraid to go, go different places and, test out you know different cavities and such so oops yeah um and so yeah i think i just kind of got fascinated with those yeah they're a neat animal they're just they had a study i don't know if you saw recently that they found that their dna matches nothing at all on earth like it's like they're basically aliens from what the the studies have said like they're their own unique species on their own whoa yeah it's kind of crazy <sighs> Well, that is, I didn't know that. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> oh, they are wow. kind of crazy looking. They, yeah, they're amazing. And and uh, Australia has some really dangerous ones, like the little blue ring octopus. It's so pretty. They're so pretty. They're so dangerous, you know. <laughs> are they just toxic? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. And they're tiny, and they're beautiful. Huh. Gosh, they're beautiful. Yeah, gorgeous little creatures, but they're tiny. And, um, yeah, I think I just, yeah, I think definitely that sea life, um, definitely influenced me. And also just, you know, when you move to a different country, that's not home and your family is not around you anymore. You know, I, I think that definitely influenced the way I was working and what I was expressing in my work. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Are you doing octopus yeah. now at all on glass? You know, I've tried them, and that this isn't the same. <laughs> yeah, they're tricky. And a lot of people, a lot of people do them already. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've kind of, I've kind of moved on from there, um, just because it seems like they got, oh, well, they got kind of popular, um, and people can do them so much better than me in class. <laughs> Yeah. So I'll, I'll let I'll let other people make them be more way more beautiful than I would in glass. <laughs> Heck yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're one of those items that like once once I figured them out, and uh, Jennifer Rumfers actually gave me a couple tips on doing them, which was what then landed uh, helped me get my job at Disney doing glass. There it was kind of crazy, but uh, mm -hmm. I've been I made a I've been mm -hmm. making octopus for them for a couple of years now. But once I figured out like the flow the tentacle, it's amazing mm -hmm. how much it, my glass itself changed just in terms of like learning root. I mean, and this is after being on the torch for, let's see, I've been there almost five years. So like 12 years, I guess it was when I got the tired there. Oh, wow. So wow. even though I had all that under wow. my belt, like started doing those tentacle pulls, it was like, I just learned so much more about heat base and how glass flows and moves. And like, it was crazy. It was weird how that worked, wow. but it was a cool little transition for me. That's really neat. Yeah. That's really cool. Huh? Yeah. I definitely recommend anybody to try them just because they're not easy. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, they have a certain like grace and elegance to them um that you really it's, could be hard to pull off, you know. Um just just the yeah, the line that they have that flow and the 
curve to them. Yeah. Hey, can you hold on one second for me? My dog is about to eat some mm-hmm. dog bed. Yes. Hold on one second. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> Bailey. Okay. <laughs> Devastation wasn't too bad. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The two of them, like, we have a male and a female, and Oakley has like a memory foam inside of a blanket kind of deal. And, uh, that my wife made like a case for it and he got the corner of it open and didn't touch anything, but she saw the hole in the corner and she's like a boxer mix. And I guess they, they root and the weather is weird. But, uh, so she started pulling the foam out of the corner and next thing you know, freaking foam everywhere. So we stuffed it back in there and now they've, uh, every once in a while she gets a hold of it and makes like the tiniest, I mean, it's like, you don't even know there's a hole in it and she pulls stuff out of it. It's crazy. Oh. She's a brat. <laughs> Aww. Silly ass dogs. <laughs> so, uh, anything else you want to cover on here before we uh, transition into our lightning round? Um, no, I just really appreciate you being willing to take the time to talk to me. Oh hell yeah! That's, that's really awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, like yeah, I said, no. I'm excited to really see like where this where this product goes for you. You know, in terms of yourself, but also for the community, just men and women both. I think it's going to be pretty big. Yeah, I'm excited to um, I'm excited to work with uh, this seamstress. Um, she does stuff for this place called Ortho Dog, and they make little braces for dogs that need them. And uh, so I think she really has an understanding of where where I'm coming from, and what what the goal of the product is, and the consi- the need for consistency. And um, so I'm very excited to be working with her and to you know work on different different models of more a more unisex item and yeah and definitely pursue you know the the more medical question about you know radiation exposure Mm -hmm. um for sure um yeah i'm curious myself I'm sure lots of people are. <laughs> yeah. And much less have even yeah. thought about it. You know, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Like, you know, how much does do we actually, yeah. you know, because I mean, you know, just kind of sidetracking here, but think, it reminds me of like, you know, when you, someone shows you some technique that you were like, you're stumped on and they show it to you and it's like, oh yeah, no shit. You know, <laughs> this is kind of one of those same things. It's like, oh yeah, women have boobs. They're more, you know, closer to your flame and your heat and your torch and the radiation coming off. Which I would think would get the you know the brunt of all the crap hitting your body, you know. So yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I think there's more and more female glass blowers now, probably than, than have been. I mean, it just seems yeah. like it's yeah, glass blowing just seems like it's expanded so much that it's starting to expand in in gender. And there's, you know, just trying to find a pair of Kevlar gloves that fit sometimes can be tricky. Things are made, you know, a certain size and sometimes they don't fit female, you know, yeah. sizes. And, and it just seems like something that should be addressed, you know, because yeah. I mean, and not only, I mean, I think a lot of glass blowers have kids now that are teenagers and are small and they want to blow glass too. And we want to keep our kids safe and protected and, you know, um, having loose gloves that dangle is not safe. You know, you need something that that fits well. And I think that's important. Um, since, since, you know, since the glass world is, it seems to be, you know, growing, you know, let allow, you know, different kinds of people to participate and do it safely i think is important yeah i agree yeah you know it's something i've been actually wanting to bring up again was i heard i'd heard a uh i don't know if, if you ever listened to tim ferris but his he had a, a guest on his podcast that was a chef and the guy was saying like they were talking about temperatures in kitchens and he only knew how hot it was because the thermometer that he had on his in his coat pocket in front of his his, his vest what he had on would tell him how hot it was in the kitchen you know and it got me thinking, like, mm-hmm. man, we should, like, us when we're working, we should either, like, tape it to our chest <clears throat> or, you know, stick it in, like, a pocket or mm-hmm. something on our shirt and wear it while we're working to really gauge how much heat our body's actually getting exposed to. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. not, 
you know, I mean, a torch is 3,000 to 4,000 plus degrees at times, you know, and not to mention your glass and everything else. It's like, it's a mm -hmm. lot of damn heat and we're more or less a slow cooked rotisserie chicken over, you know, a 10 to 20 year process period of time. Just killing our scales, yeah. our, uh, our cells and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, if you think about the precautions that athletes take when they work in the heat and the humidity, you know, I mean, essentially you're, you're, you're like an athlete even with that same exposure. Um, you know, glass is very physical and, you know, it requires a lot of your body, not, you know, and then you add that your temperatures and your humidity and, you know, you almost have to approach it as if you're you're a long distance runner running in the heat. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and and definitely uh, staying not just hydrated, but also being aware of you know your electrolyte balance and you know making sure you don't you know get your pH out of whack. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Not to mention protecting your your skin. Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah, we're all going to be tattooed and wrinkly, and hopefully not covered yeah. in skin cancer. But you never know; skin cancer could be prevalent. I mean, I know it's in my family, myself personally, so I'm going to probably have some kind of shit with it. But you know, I hate mm -hmm. to see a whole generation of kids and that that are younger, you know, in their early twenties that are doing this now, and thirty years from now, mm -hmm. come up with something screwy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something to educate, you know, get educated about, for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. also, I was talking to my seamstress yesterday, too, about doing a double stuff um, version of this for people that have, maybe have piercings. Oh, yeah. In in locations, since those do get much, much hotter. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, my glasses so, yeah. on my face get hot as hell sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and if you have like piercings in certain places, like Jeez. so, we're working on a double stuff one as well for people that might have piercings that they want to keep in while they're working. Yeah, or maybe you can make like a pasty <laughs> or something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, or a center like one with an extra center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They can make a fancy yeah, and put so tassels and stuff on them and. <laughs> You're right. There you go. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> have a whole Instagram account. No, no nipples or nothing. You just have them all down there. Be yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought about trying to do an actual bra, um, but the problem with that is that, you know, bras are so, you know, size specific to each person. They fit so differently. Um, and I, I think that would make, that would be very challenging to try to do. And it's it's sort of a hard. It would be hard to come up with just like a three size bra, right. per se. Um, so you know, I'm working with this um, seamstress, and we're sort of hashing out different ways of approaching that idea as well. Because it would be nice to be able to just sell, you know, like a some you know more of a actual garment that you could just throw on. Yeah, exactly. Like a sports bra with pockets or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's something we're definitely going to be visiting along along the road here as well. So, but, um, yeah, the tassel, that's what <laughs> Hilarious. sent me in that, that direction. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, when, definitely when you get this, the, the lines going, we'll bring you back on and discuss what you have available because I definitely want to definitely follow up with this. Oh, thank you. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and I'll do. I'll definitely do some research and some asking around. And you know, I have they have a pretty good anatomy, biology department at my school, and you know, I'm sure there's a, quite a few qualified people just to start asking that question of, you know, as a starting point. Yeah, yeah. You got to take a, like a video of yourself on the torch or something like that, so they can kind of get a visual of what what you're actually, what's going on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. I did that with yeah, my dermatologist. Yeah, I got, sorry, my, my gears. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I did that with my dermatologist just so, just so she could see, like, how close I am and the actual brightness and exposure and 
all that stuff. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, on that note, let's take a break to thank our sponsors, and then we will come back, and it'll be time for us to crash the kiln. Okay. <laughs> This episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show is brought to you by The Flow Magazine. Since its inception, the focus of The Flow has been to provide a bond among members of the lamp working community. In every issue, you can enjoy great content with the hottest artists and cutting-edge techniques using the latest industry products. These features, along with the continuation of our Women in Glass edition, Glass Craft Emergent Artist Awards, inspiring gallery showcases, dynamic general interest articles, as well as health and safety information, make The Flow the leading international lampworking journal. For more information or to subscribe to The Flow, go to theflowmagazine.com. That's theflowmagazine.com. Okay, we're back. That was a quick break. So, uh, huh. yeah, so this is the Crash in the Killing Round. It's always a fun time. So, it's, uh, okay. I actually added a new question. You're the first person to get this question. So, it's going to be new to you, too, since you didn't have it in your notes. So, <laughs> okay. But, uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, seven questions. Actually, let me count this. Yeah. I always say six. Let me see. One, two, three, four. Oh. Yeah, so seven questions. Um, seven. Yeah. Okay. So, and if you want to give me an answer that's thirty to six seconds long, uh, you can expound upon the answer if you like, because it always happens, and they end up being thirty minutes long. And then, uh, yeah. So we'll go from there. And, okay. Uh, Sounds good. Awesome. So the first question I always like to ask is if you could work with any living glass artist that you have not worked with yet, who is it and why? Um. Well, I thought about this, um, and it's going to sound crazy, but I, um, Judas Schachter who's kind of unrelated, but she is a stained glass artist in Philadelphia and her stained glass is incredible. Um, and I would love to watch her process and, uh, her idea generation is fascinating. So she was the first person that popped into my mind, okay. even it's though it's she's not a lamp, she's not a lamp worker, but oh, it's okay. Do you, uh, she does stained glass. So. how do you spell her name? Uh, let me think. Uh, it's Judith, and her last name is Schachter, S-C-H-A-E-C-P-E-R. Please forgive me if I spelled your name wrong. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'm, sure. a, I'm a big fan, big okay. fan of her her work. Awesome. So uh, what are your top five favorite colors in glass? Oh, uh, fume. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Fume. How's that? That's not five, though, but... You can get five colors out of fume. <laughs> you can. <laughs> so when you're doing your fume, are you using gold and silver, I take it? Yes. Mm, yes. Yeah. I like it over clear. I like it over blue. Yeah. Yeah, it's I love beautiful. it over blue. Yeah, me too. I did some chandelier components that were like flared out like seashells, and I then I fumed mm. the inside of them, you know, and I had like a really heavy, heavy silver at the very center of the of like the cone of it, you know, and then as it came out Ooh. to the edge of the flare, it kind of got more of the, the pinks and the oranges that the gold can get with the blues. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. I love yeah. that stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Hell yeah. So if you could <laughs> describe the sound of glass cracking in one word, what is it? Oh, no. <laughs> well, those are two words, but we'll make it count. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's uh, what's your worst injury in the studio? Oh, first injury. Um, oh, your worst injury. I ha- Worst injury. Oh, gosh. Well, thankfully, I actually have not really hurt myself too bad with glass. I've hurt myself more with metal. Um, yeah. I, I electrocuted myself once with a flex shaft. Oh, Jesus. And I ripped my hair out with a flex shaft. And, yeah, I think those are my two worst, probably. <laughs> but that was that was metal and not glass, though. Hell, yeah. Well, I'm not going to wood because every time my artist comes on and says they had not yet had a major injury, I'm always like, oh, my God, am I going to have jinx you and cause this to happen? So. Right. Yeah. So please don't hurt yourself, except for at least maybe a week later. <laughs> I know, right? Oh. I won't be responsible for it. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. So when you're in the studio, do you listen to music, watch TV, or do you do both? 
um, I like to listen to music when no one's around and they won't hear me singing. And I like to listen to podcasts. I'm really hooked on um, the Pandora serial podcasts. Um, I just, I just really like to listen to yeah, those. I, I hope they finally give us some answers to the first season. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. God, yeah. Try me crazy. I didn't get through the whole yeah. second one yet, but the yeah, I got through I got the updates from for the first one, but I, that was as yeah. far as I went with it. Yeah, that was frustrating. But it just kind of ended. It was like you can't end a podcast like that. Yeah. Like, that's not fair. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird cuz that whole group, they've kind of gone through their new like I guess they're changing the way they're doing their shows or something. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan of podcasts that are, are year round. I'm, I'm, the seasons I can deal with, but it's like I'm not a big fan of being left hanging. So. Yeah, that's just cruel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like TV. If I want to watch TV, I'll just watch TV. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so, any other uh, shows you like that you can recommend for us? Yours. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> hell yeah. Um. I'm just exploring NPR One. I just discovered that and just letting that play. Nice. Uh, well, see Tim, where you end up. Tim Ferriss is definitely a common one I recommend. He's got a great show. Okay. I'll definitely check that out. If you like uh, yeah. interviews and insights to things. And uh, Mark Marin, the WTF, he's got a great episode or great podcast too. He's a little long winded at mm-hmm. times, but, uh, and what's funny is the only one that he has had. I think he's got like over 100 episodes now, but the only one that was not uh, like a rated, you know, foul mouth language was his interview with Obama. It was actually available for everyone to listen to because he did not cuss. He was a good boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. So, That's cool. That's yeah. Cool. But yeah, interesting <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Podcasts are great. Like, there's such a, cause I, th- I thought I find with our, our industry, not everybody has a college education and you know, we're not all, seeking college education we all seek knowledge and i think the podcast Mm -hmm. has really helped artists in general really have the opportunity to continue their education through listening to a show while they're being creative in the studio it's like this whole awesome you know thing that we have now access to yeah i agree yeah 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 and you can i mean you can find information and uh the subject matter like you uh, I think that's one of the things I like about letting just letting NPR one just play because I never know where it's gonna I'm gonna end up and yeah and you can learn so much from it yeah absolutely yeah. another one yeah. I recommend a lot too is one called Startup and they've had a they've had hmm. two seasons now the first season was about them as a company uh, beginning and starting and everything and then the second season was about a company that they followed going through the same process of starting from scratch and going through in investors and mm. really interesting stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, good, good information for those that want to scale their business or just know how, you know, kind of the ins and outs of what a major business has to go through to get started. <clears throat> oh yeah. That sounds really cool. I'll still look that one up. Yeah. Awesome. Heck yeah. So, uh, my new question I have, is do you have any tattoos that are art related or glass blowing related? I don't have any tattoos. None at all. No, I'm yeah. a completely blank canvas. Well, of course, I, I the have, first person I, I ask has none. <laughs> Jesus, I'm gonna edit this I out. Have fre- I have freckles. <laughs> <laughs> I have freckles, but no tattoos. Hell yeah! And well, I don't, I don't even wear my piercings anymore. I used to have, you know, an ear full of piercings that I don't, I don't even wear anymore. Nice. Well, have your husband take a marker and connect the dots in shape of a torch and then take a picture and you'll be the first guest that has a, okay. a glass tie. <laughs> that's your, that's your okay. answer. <laughs> All right. You got it. Awesome. <laughs> I'll, okay. work, I'll work on that. <laughs> okay. I'll make sure that that question's in the notes next time. <laughs> so uh, my last and final question I'd like to ask is if you were stranded on an island that had a glass studio in it and supplied your gases, your kiln, and your torch... And you had to make something. It could be whatever you want to make. And the island itself could be however you want it to be. Uh, what five items would you bring? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, you know, that's how it's I mean, I can't answer that question <laughs> because I would probably want to bring my grandpa's hammers. And those don't have anything to do with glass. Um, so I thought about that. And um, if I can have a hammer, just for you know nostalgia yep. and then probably just 
you know, supplies to make very simple few things. So just the very basic, um, you know, a paddle and um, a blow hose and some fume sticks. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, that would probably be about it, really. Just very, very basic. Well, you have your hammer in there, yeah. so you've got four, so you have one more left. And, oh, one uh, more left. You have, it's the most important thing that not everybody forgets, but they tend to forget. Um, my um, cutters. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you're still, you're still yeah. missing one. I'm still missing one. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow, I get to bring a lot. <laughs> what's, the, what's the one thing you need to see what the hell it is you're doing? Oh, my glasses. That's one of my glasses. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> and, my, and a pair of great bras. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Just bring a suitcase. You're good to go. <laughs> but you know, it's funny with the glasses because it's always one of those things that we just, we're so used to wearing them all the time that we just don't even think about, you know, wearing them at, or needing them for uh, something like this. So. That's very true. Yeah, you make a good point. I was also thinking a chapstick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get into survival mode. I started thinking about yeah. like using coconuts and making my own fire and you know whatever. Right, right. yeah, that's true. I mean, you can you can wear, wear a coconut bra. Maybe that'd be like the new the new product that'll keep your boobs safe. Is coconut bras. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not a bad idea. They probably insulate fairly well. Actually. Yeah. Um, Just carve them out and tuck them on in there. Be good to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like turtle shells or something, you know. Yeah, that yeah. Which one would be more heat resistant? You reckon tortoise right. shell? Or... I guess the the coconut's a little more vegan. You're not killing an animal. Yeah, this so. is true. Unless the turtles are alive, and you just well, no. But then you have your heat, and that might kill them. So yeah, and then you'd be cooking the turtle. Yeah, and that would smell bad. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> plus it'd be really mean to the yeah, turtle. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> it's like slow cooking a frog. It's just gonna sit there and look at oh! you. You know. Oh, there you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm vegan. Uh. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, so definitely the coconuts. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely do the coconut. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So if uh, before we let you go and have have this is fun. I'm glad you're on. So uh, if you can give the audience any kind of parting piece of advice, and then also where we can find you out there in the world of cyberspace. Um. Uh, ooh, advice. Oh, gosh. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just keep just keep going and keep making mistakes and qu- keep being curious. Um, I think that applies to everything in life. Um, and you can find my metal work on my website, which is nadjagustafson.com, and you can find Great Bras of Fire at Mountain uh, glass arts in Asheville, North Carolina. Hell yeah. And I'll have all those links on the show notes for everybody to click on and check them out. And again, thank you for coming on and sharing this, uh, your story and your products with us. And like I said, I want to bring you back on and see what's, uh, what's up with them and start getting these out there because safety and precautions from the very beginning is how we're all going to live longer and keep doing this for as long as we can. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, hell yeah. So, all right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed our <laughs> conversation with Nadja. And again, I'll have all her links to all her fun stuff out there and on the show notes and also on the website and what have you. And she will be episode 109 next week. Oh, no, actually, you'll be 10, 108. Yeah, shit, 108. Oh, yay, 108. So, yeah, you're gonna be, you'll be coming out on Monday. It's coming up Monday. So, yeah, excited. So, all right, y'all. Hope you enjoy. We'll see you next time on the Wise Guy Radio Show. Take it easy. This episode is also brought to you by C-Cube Co. C-Cube now creates a wide range of specialty and one-of-a-kind artistic glassware. Items such as hand-blown wine crafts, insulated coffee mugs, pint glasses, and custom piggy banks. Plus glass pendants that you can have personalized with imprinting logos and color accents that are available. Just go to C-Cube Co. That's S-E-A-C-U-B-E-C-O dot com for more information. That's C-Cube Co. dot com. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the Wise Guy Radio Show. If you have any questions, comments, or remarks, please leave them in the show notes page area where it says comments. 
We'll see you soon. Have a wise night.